Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Samrost 2. As I surmised last time, we can go to the star and use the level select pictures uh, to uh, pick up where we left off last time. Conveniently, we're just in the right place for for one of these. Um, it's quite a distinctive screen here. And now we get a little recap of what happened last time. So if you're now joining us, this is what oh. befell our known friend. Who <laughs> is uh, in search of their, their little dog who's currently being used as a uh, Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Samrost 2. As I surmised last time, we can use the uh, the level select menu to return to where we left off. There's no other save function. Um, and conveniently, we did leave off uh, just at one of these chapter points here with this rather distinctive room. Um, so we'll, we'll load back in there and we'll get a little recap of um, what's happening to our gnome friend. Who is currently in pursuit of their dog napped oh. pet? There you go, you see, we've been slimed up into this, uh, this hole here. And I think last time I'd worked out that we could fiddle with the, uh, the aerial or the, the tuning dial to um, detune the TV and we can move this object, we have to click and drag it, um, move it over to one of the horns of the, the skull on the wall um, and that attracts the uh, the TV watchers, the, um, I guess the, the boss of this particular small society, um, their hat flies off and gets attracted to the fan. Um, so that uh, I was feeling quite sleepy last time so I might use that as an excuse for some of the things I missed, but mm -hmm. um, I hadn't realised first of all that the primary reason the fan gets uh, the fan attracts the hat um, mm -hmm. is that when we move this around, uh, the dog runs in different directions, which is cool. So I hadn't realised that, um, and then that also turned me to thinking about what is this object if it's so attractive for the dog that it's their uh, primary motivation for running. And I said to myself, well, I guess it could be a sausage. Um, I did Google s check sausages, uh, but I'm afraid I can't show you any of those results. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Samorost 2. Um, as I surmised last time, we can use the uh, the chapter menu uh, to find our level and return there. There's no other save function. And luckily we left off just at the beginning of one of these chapter points, with this very distinctive room here. Uh, we'll load it in and it will give us a little recap of, of what's happened when we first entered the room. So we um, we're sort of acting on behalf of our of our little gnome friend, who is currently seeking out their dog napped dog. Yeah. So it's uh, an unfortunate sequence of events where they uh, get mistaken for food, uh, and then kind of get consumed in a different way, like that. So this this is the status quo of this room. And um, last time, uh, what I figured out we could do, I figured out we could detune the TV, which causes the um, the the boss character, this um, this one who seems to be 
in charge in this particular society uh, to move over to the TV. Um, we can also move this hanging object from one hook on this side to the ornamental skull on the other side of the dog's wheel um, mm. and that causes the hat to be uh, attracted to the van um, mm. which causes the um, the character in the middle to, to reach for it. Um, so what I hadn't realised mm. last time, and I was, I don't know if you could tell from my voice, I was quite sleepy at the time of recording, was that um, moving this around, let me click and drag it to move it again, uh, changes the direction of the fan because it changes the direction the dog runs in, which got me to thinking about, well, what is this? Because I assumed it was some kind of weight um, originally. Uh, but it must be attractive to the dog, so I surmised, well, perhaps it's a sausage. Um, so to do a little bit of research to see if it made any more sense to me, I did try googling uh, Czech sausage. Unfortunately, I can't show you any of those results, but um, that does seem to be a credible uh, uh, option for what this is. Um, so I'd gotten that far, and then I'd got a little bit stuck. Um, we can fiddle with the... Oh, the beetle that ah, here we, go. we can fiddle with the beetle that runs around the wall uh, in sort of a, a circuit. I see when we, when it disappears out of view it's kind of doing the uh, the fourth a lap around the fourth wall. Or we can fiddle with the uh, front of this plant, which is quite satisfying but I don't think it's gonna get us anywhere. Um, so I, I'd got a bit stuck at this point and I think it's kind of an interesting um, note about my perception of this mm -hmm. is that the the first few times I attempted this level, so last time on um, mm -hmm. on record, and then times in between uh, to try and figure out what to do here. Um, there's a really important piece of mm -hmm. information that I hadn't noted um, in the opening animation, and I wonder if if you had too. I'm sure I'm sure there are plenty of viewers mm -hmm. out there who are, who already know exactly what I need to do, uh, <laughs> and may have been shouting at the screen. Mm -hmm. So in my head, the order of events, as I recalled them, was that the uh, the gnome came in um, and then got sort of autonomously swallowed by this mm. sticky, I remember the sticky goop, um, swallowing the, the gnome and taking them out of sight up here. Mm. But uh, none of the times I'd watched it did I clock that there's a button under this character's hand mm. here. And if we press that, or their hands off it, mm -hmm. we get released. And they look shocked. And then they press it again and we go back in there. So I found it really interesting that I, I just, in my, part of my mental process, I just hadn't noticed that at all. I mean, I guess it is, it's pretty, it's designed out of view from when the mm -hmm. hand is down. Um, and it is, does, I mean, mm -hmm. from a, Aesthetic and ergonomic point of view, it suits the chair perfectly. But from a game design point mm. of view, I guess it could be more obvious if you if you want to make it easier to find. Um, so we're going to mm. keep everything as it is, I think, and we need to try that again. Mm. But act a little more quickly once we're down mm. the floor, because now we can we can click on the chair, mm. uh, which we weren't previously able to do. Mm. And then that character get released by their own petard. Um, not quite sure where the hat went, that's a shame. We could have done with that. So we've got a key, that's a click and drag object. Um, we can take that over to the wheel cage, yay! Okay, super. So, um, the, uh, what I like is that there are several things in here that don't actually do anything to contribute to the, the puzzle, um, but the fact that you can now detune the TV on your way out um, is a really nice little character bit that I, uh, I appreciate that you can choose to add. Oh great, we're already heading back to our rocket. Thanks, little robot. So I guess this I guess this is gonna be a shorter video than I thought. I'm not entirely sure that I've played this before, but I uh, It's 
But it seems this little robot and the whole setup in that room seemed. Ah, look at the planet. Beautiful. I don't know if we got to see it in its, its full glory first time. Um, this does all seem quite familiar. Um, so maybe I did play this back in the day, but it's, it's interesting that it didn't stick with me to the degree that the original Sandbox did. Oh dear, oh no, we're running out of rocket fuel. That's not good. So if I if I had to guess, I'd say this is probably the point at which um, the original version of Samros 2 split in half. So I think the free the free part would have ended, and this would be the um, the extra bit, as it gives a, a fairly satisfying conclusion to the the first mini adventure, and then I believe there's a second one to be uh, to be had. Oh, this um, this island appears to be. A living creature by the looks of it, a porcupine type creature. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, what can we interact with here? A rocket's on fire, which is not very encouraging. Ooh, colour changing moth thing. Ooh, ooh! And this flower does things, and. Oh, this bug appears to be stuck on its back. That's not good. Anyway, uh, there's something wriggling under this canvas. It's parachute. It's our dog friend! Yay! Okay, I guess we need to get down, don't we? Um, click on the pole that we're on. Can we click on the canoe? In combination? Oh, in combination, okay. Hey! Okay. Um, so I can't click on our, our friend or the rocket. I wonder if we can we do something with the. Uh, Plant or the moth or the oh, I like that you can get different sounds out of these vents. That's nice. All oh, right, anything else in the environment that we can? Uh, that little flower thing is too quick to do it with. I was curious, I'm not. So this moth definitely has its um routine. It does turn a bit pinky red once over there. I don't know how that would help our our little beetles. So I can't really do anything to help the big one, the adult one, presumably. Um, I kind of... Can I... I can... Oh, I can pick up the... I can pick up the little one. But I'm not sure what I would do with it, something to do with the, the flower when it opens. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, not quite sure how that worked, but it did. So that's nice. Okay, now we're in in action. What's gonna happen? Oh, okay, we're riding on it. That's that's okay. I recognise this person. I suspect it's one of the developers. Um, previously worked in some kind of agricultural endeavour on a different island. 
like this forest. So there's a, there's a bird here with a sort of a, a natural shade there. And there's the dog. Oh, can click on the dog. And obviously this person and the lamp. I don't look like the little ants. They're cool, aren't they? Um. All right, bird, bird. No, dog. Oh, the uh, plant flex. That's an interesting reaction. The person. Oh. Yes, you were a smoker, I remember. So you would like a pipe. Okay. How about your lantern? Okay. Can we go in any other direction? I wonder. Um, not obviously. Okay. So that fixes. <laughs> Hi, yeah. Bird. Interesting. Oh, hang on, I saw you click on the note. Oh, if I click anywhere near these things, even though there's no hand symbol, they flex. Okay. That's interesting. It's nice, there's a nice little environmental detail. But I don't. Um... Can I pick up anything? Can I pick up the dog? No? And the lads. This twig? No? Hmm. Curious. The, um, the night sky moves quite quickly behind us. I guess this um, this little planetoid moves pretty quick. Hmm, curious. So the bird doesn't really seem to have much reaction. It opens his beak. Can't do anything with this this growth. Um, now I can tweak the plants, which is nice. Which big is back to me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Uh, you know what? The um the nest the bird is sitting in does look rather like the bowl of a pipe, I would say. And the branches could look like the stem of a pipe. Is that what's occurring? Is that what we're doing? Nothing else seems to be interactable that I can see. How about the bells? Oh, I can take the bells off. Um. Okay. Um. Normally they go on another. Yeah, normally an interactable click and drag thing in this game goes on another hotspot. Oh, okay. What's that? The third bell appeared. This is all curious. So I popped a bell on there. And it's not doing anything. I'm glad it liked the bell. Any hints? It's still like a pipe. That's fine. Um. Have I somehow bugged it? By putting that one there. Oh, hang on. I just... 
Oh no, hang on, it's going for that now. That's good. So, do... Oh, they're naturally growing bells. Is it a matter of quantity of bells, do we think? Am I... Do I need to be doing something else? Do I need to be doing something with the nest while it goes to get the bell? That could be it. That would be... Uh... <laughs> The pipe is in the nest, that makes perfect sense. Have you a pipe? A bag or something, you say? Down here? Ooh, okay. A badger. That's a cool badger. Oh, it's an angry badger. Okay. Alright, so this is the, this is the standoff. Some water. Oh, look at that. Have a little drink. Okay, so you have a little drink and then go back to grabbing it. Then. Oh, there's the. Oh! Okay, a wee makes a plant grow. And... Oh, is this a keep drinking, keep having wee's gag? Is that what's happening? Interesting. Okay, now, so now we can see there's a bone there. Gives the badger a bone? Okay, somewhat counterintuitive, but <laughs> that's fine. Cool. Uh, so, do you, do you want this bag? Oh, that's your tobacco. Of course it is. You didn't take very good care of your um, smoking supplies. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> I like that. Oh, you are a happy person. Alright, um, how do we get out of here? That's kind of my name. Are oh, we following the firefly? Okay. Let's do it. So I think we're going to look for... Oh, this was the top of the island. I remember seeing a lighthouse. There's a taxi service. Oh. Maybe we just have to abandon our rocket ship. That could be it, couldn't it? Or we can go inside. There's a line. There's a bellows attached to... Like a trumpety thing. Okay, and there's some kind of balloon on top, is that? Yeah, okay. Okay. Hmm. Um Dog's just having a nap. Person's not doing anything. Can I go to the taxi? Apparently I can. Oh. Hmm. I'm not sure what the like putting the plunger does necessarily. It probably blew up the balloon, but I took the balloon off. There's no apparent reason. 
Right, well that's, that reaches where it should go, but it doesn't actually seem to do anything. So that's good. Can we go back over here? Let's go in the lighthouse and see what that's all about. Okay, uh, there's a cupboard. Oh, okay. Uh, there's. A kettle we can fill with water. Uh, we put it on the fire. Okay. It's cough. Rum. Oh. Coffee, fish oil, and brown. We can do this. Okay, um. So I've got some hot water. What? What's that all about? So I, th I think I want to wake this person up. And I've got a balloon in my pocket, but I don't really know what to do with. Can I go up the top? No. Don't seem to be able to take any of these things or do anything with them. Um, I guess I can cl close the cupboard. Maybe now I can do other stuff? Yeah, I definitely can't do anything with any of those. Okay, close cupboard. Um, I'm going to ring the bell. Um, let's come out. Can I put the balloon back on? No. Um, I don't have an inventory as such, so I can't use the balloon. So if the balloon pops, that would be a loud sound that might wake someone up. Um, I'm not quite sure what to do with the taxi itself. That doesn't seem to stick. Can I? Can I go up the mountain? Is that an option? No. Yes. Yes, I can go up the mountain, okay. Oh, hello. Oh, it's like a flying manatee thing. I have affinity with you, flying manatee. Alright, more devices. Alright, we go over there to. Oh, okay. What do these things do? This is a trough. Can't really. Oh, okay. 
these are extend and retract. Looks like it'll be some kind of water device. Device for liquids. I mean, is this pumping up the balloon? Oh, hang on. There's a full can I see humanity? Okay, I don't know what all these things mean. So that doesn't really do anything for the balloon that I've put on that out there. Um, I can retract this thing. And extend it. I feel like full extension is probably way to go. Um, can I do anything with either of these guys right now? No. Um, well, I certainly don't know what this has got me. Mm. Don't know why I'd want to stand on that barrel. Interesting. Oh! Now I've got a tickly stick. Can I tickle awake this space manatee? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, the back of the house came was a good idea. Oh. 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 Okay, so I've put like some kind of fertilizer in there. Oh, that's food, okay. Oh, it's a bubble collector. Is that right? Okay, I think this is a multi stage process. I go. As, a, as there's no natively no air in space, I need to go and uh, do that, and then retract this one. This second mountain will come along. I think is that right? Is it coming on? Anybody? Okay. I'm going to see we have to do it a fourth time as well. Done. Okay. Uh, so, what are we doing with our balloon? That's something we can pick up. Oh, okay. We'll just give it interesting. So, I can click and drag it to the moon that time. Great, so now we've got a full balloon. Which I think was a good thing. Do I put it on here? 
No, do I use it on the... I can't do the bell now. That's interesting. Oh. Ah. Um. Should I try the thing? The machinery? Is that no? Oh, oh, hang on. Is this a case of having to do that all over again? Oh, I don't really like that design decision. Hmm. Okay. Not very samurai. Um, quite old school adventure gamey, I must say. Yeah, I am. I've definitely got. I've been uh, formulating some. Uh, so, oh, I haven't put my balloon on there yet. Ahead of myself. Ah. Um, yeah, that one's coming for a different pattern, isn't it? Interesting. Okay. Um, I've been formulating some thoughts on um, Samros 2 and how how it feels quite different to the. Um, the original sound rust, um, which I, I guess I'll go into in a little bit. Driver, oh. uh, feds and manatees. I want to do this, don't I? Where do they actually come? So, if it's the same as before, then there'd be one here, right? This three times, as I recall. And then retract that a little, and then get ready to pull the handle. Yeah. Yeah, so I think I think my main uh, my main thought really is that this is a lot more self-consciously an adventure game than um, than Samros was. Oh, you! Oh. They're mixing up with a third one in a different place. That's interesting. Full balloon we can give to the name, and we can. I think the name heads back by themselves. And then, after they've run down the hill, we can uh, put that on there. So, I just go on here. You know what? I'm starting to think that the. Uh, Ringing the bell and the putting the kettle on stuff was all just a little bit of environmental Was that good? Okay Ah, oh, okay. Okay, does the... So I get a little reward sound for that, but... I don't know that it's helpful. So this is... 
Oh, it's run out of air now. I did waste one puff, so I might need an extra puff. Um, I'm really sad to say it, but this is this is actually quite tedious. Okay, let's go up the mountain and try again. I don't know how much fuel we need for this taxi. Um, but we'll, we'll fill another balloon for and we'll try and put as much of that into the um, into the taxi as possible. So I guess this is why we're doing the um, this repetitive job. I suppose now is as good a time as any to talk about. I guess what's what's different. So for me, the uh, oh, extent of this. Um, let's try again. Uh, for me, the, um, the the scale of what's happening is different. Um, we felt a lot, I felt a lot further out from mm. the character of the gnome beforehand um, and felt the uh, emphasis mm. of the gameplay was a lot more on um, uh, well the gameplay was at more of just play mm. actually and this is very consciously um, puzzle based mm. is that it? oh ok that wasn't very helpful um, Yes, you'd be presented with um, a very small gnome in a large landscape, um, which was quite alien um, and full of little, um, yeah, it's full of little bits of life that you can interact with, and you weren't really sure what anything would do in relation to anything else. But um, the fun was was just in interacting with it and um, experimenting. Um, and within short order you'd find um, a combination that uh, a combination that would um, help the gnome to progress and their story was just sort of going on incidentally almost um, I guess apart from you're helping them out as part of the environment but I guess it's kind of more puzzling when you got to the final um, this uh, this random I think this is randomised a bit more than it was first time, which I find a little frustrating, especially as I'm trying to commentate at the same time. Mm. Oh, I think this will do. Yeah, I think we've got a full balloon. There we go. Mm. Hooray. Um. Yeah, so I think that. It ties in with what Amanita Design was doing at the time with Sam Rost, or from Sam Rost on, rather. It's so kind of using Flash to um, make these creative, interactive environments. Um, so Sam Rost, for, for the for the pleasure of its own, of his own self, um, and um, and then commercially for for other projects. Um, such as the Polyphonics Free, so it would be in pr a promotional, a promotional project. Okay. Okay. So now I've pulled the handle. I, if I do the stomp and then the pump, that puts an air in. Great. Pump. Yeah, so whereas with um, Samros 2, I think Amanita are thinking in terms of the type of adventure game that we had throughout the 1980s and 1990s, which um, makes it more puzzle focused rather than um, a more diffuse. Oh. What am I doing here? Mm -hmm. 
I pumped a lot of air into this taxi. I mean, do I need to give the... Hang on, the kettle's back in the... Interesting. Can I put it back in the... Okay. Um, you know what? I'm a bit stumped. I'm going to go and have a look and see what we need to do next. And I'll, um, I'll join you back here in a moment. Hi there, we're back. So I've reloaded this, um, this sequence. And we'll start again. Um, and it appears I was just doing everything in the wrong order. I had the right ideas, but um, you can only do them in a specific order. So I wanted to put other things in the um, teapot after I'd filled it with water, but you need to put things in uh, first, apparently, before you do anything else with it, which is a bit pernickety. So there's some coffee cooking, brewing I suppose, um, and then, yeah, sorry, it was, it was boiling hot. Um, so yes, you have to know to pour the coffee into the sleeping. <laughs> that did sound rather like there's no fuel in my engine. Um, and we need to do the same stuff that we were doing with the uh, the space vanities before. So I think, <laughs> interestingly, this sequence kind of is kind of the culmination of of what I was thinking about in regards to um, Samros 2 versus Samorost because this is a very um, this is a very adventure game sequence it involves doing um, a not very intuitive sequence of events for to gain a specific outcome um, and it's quite rigid in that I'd, I'd intuit a fair proportion of what what we need to do but I, I wasn't doing it in the exact right order for it to um, to be effective um, and I think that for me that's um, that's a worse design than in Samorost it's less less forgiving um, I mean, it's also a matter of taste as well. If um, if you are a big fan of that kind of puzzle, um, and certainly l lots of people were, especially in the heyday of um, of classic heyday of adventure games in the eighties and nineties. But for me, that's that's not the um, I pressed the wrong thing. Uh, not the most rewarding. It's very hard to talk and click at the same time. Um, not the most rewarding use of, of um, what they've got here. So for me, the um, what was so refreshing about um, Sam Rust. So I don't know why it's um, it's changed from the first time. Interesting. So I think we need to go full extension now, right? To the next one. Okay, I'm gonna try and focus on this so I can get this balloon filled. Is that where the manatee's going? It's a bit hard, hard to just distance. So I think not. I think I need to be there. Oh, I missed it. Oh, Blooming Dales. Um, I think I think I did it that time. Yes, I did. Oh, thank goodness. 
Um, mm. It's really weird that it was just two positions in the first, the first time we did this, and now it's it goes between all three, um, and you can't necessarily predict. I don't think it's on a pad at the moment. Yes. Okay. I think we've done it, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, coming back to my rambling thoughts. About Samrost. You're asleep again? It resets every time. Oh man. Alright, so let me put this balloon back on here. I'll go through all this again. So this this is obviously more a limitation of what you can do with um flash in that rooms have to be discreet and um progress doesn't carry on. I mean the um the manipulation of flash is more advanced than in, in Samros. So you've got these click and drag objects that we, we didn't have before, which um direct handling objects makes it feel a lot more like a traditional adventure game as well. Um and I kinda of preferred when you were just sort of clicking on points in the environment and seeing what happened and um just because there was a so, because there was some causality that you could follow, um, and some just because there was a limited pattern that you could click through, you would get to a point where progress would be made, um, and each point there'd be there'd be a little something to delight you. But um, most of the interactions are functional, and they're kind of they feel um, designed rather than intuitive. Um, like they do in uh Hello. Oh. Did I not put the coffee oh. in on the Oh did I did not put the water in. Okay. Um coffee water teach me for trying to talk and play. Right, so that bubbles, I ring the bell. I pour the coffee in the sleeping person's Ooh. mouth, Ooh. burn them slightly. Yeah. And then I go on to the taxi. Yeah, so all, I'm not. This isn't a fun interaction with the environment. This is trying to work out a specific pattern of stuff. Ah, and the thing lights up, and then. Good. Are we all good to go? Yay! Okay, so I think we might have to abandon our rocket after all. That's a... That's a Prime piece of Samros lore, that little, that little rocket. Here's our lovely little home. Ah! Oh. Nice, we have a party with the taxi driver. They brought some of their <laughs> some of their rum. Oh, I do. So one thing about this. Um, the more zoomed in scale of this game. So it facilitates more of a classical adventure game design uh, for all that brings with it. But there's. It allows for um, more detailed character designs and animations as well. And they're delightful. <laughs> the drunk and taxi driver. They're delightful. I mean, I'd, I like, could happily read a. Um, Ah, oh, and then we get the credits. Wonderful. I'd happily read like a Sam Ross comic with these characters in because they're delightful. Um, and they're simply but effectively designed. So I, th I think I think this is... Sam Ross 2 represents an important step for Amanita into commercial game design. And for better or worse, it's, it's a definite step into adventure games.
Here we go, and it reloads at the start. Yeah. So I, I mean, I, I still love the design, uh, visual design elements of the game. Um, they're still rich environments. Um, but so much too. There's two two little stories tacked together, um, very linear, very puzzle driven, and I think one of the problems with implementing puzzle design in the Samrost environment, because in the first game it is very much an environment that you interact with and you experiment with, uh, is that you need points of reference. Um, to be clues, to be hints as to what happened. So you need either some direct feedback or you have to assume some pre-existing knowledge on the part of the, the player. And that tends towards um, more mechanical puzzles, especially in a game like this with um, no verbal communication. I mean, we do get some uh, sort of voice clips to suggest that something might be a, a, a bad idea or a good idea. Um, and there was some semi-dialogue from the, the taxi driver as well. Um, but yeah, so this is going mostly on um, environmental audio, like Foley effects and, um, and visual cues uh, to key in what, it's, what it wants its player to do. So presenting a series of um, mechanisms which might be readily understood um, from, from previous life experience. It's kind of a, a clear direction to go in, but that at the same time is a departure from the um, the more organic and sort of ecosystem-based um, screen by screen progression that you've got in Samrost. Um, this is this is a very much a more object-based, me mechanically um, driven puzzle system, and I think that's interesting. It's interesting that Samrost heads in that direction. It's interesting that from here, Amanita go on to then make the game Machinarium, which is about um, robot characters in a mechanised world. It seems like a, a very natural progression from Samros to Samros 2 to Machinarium. I think driven initially by the desire to make this an adventure game in the traditional sense and how that can be achieved drives it more towards mechanisms and then once they've got to that stage they think well we've got so many mechanisms why can't we make a game around all those mechanisms uh, but I, th I think that's it for our, our video for Samros 2 I, I enjoyed playing it but it's a very different experience to the original Samros um, I, th I have a feeling I probably did play the, the first part originally I don't seem to recall the second um, so I expect I was probably uh, cheap enough to only play the free part um, at the time it was originally released in 2005. And incidentally at the, uh, at the time you would have only had uh, a level select with, based on um, codes for each level which would have seemed quite retro for 2005. I'm curious to see what Samros 3 is like. I mean I, I definitely do intend to play some more um, Amanita games for Let's Plays. I have previously played um, Machinarium and Botanicula, which I think are their next two uh, adventure game releases, chronologically, I believe. Um, so it'd be interesting to return to those, I think, and, and see, uh, see what I think of those now. So um, expect more Amanita at some point in the future, and um, hopefully Samros 3 we can uh, have a look at together as well. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, I hope it was an interesting um, look at the game. And um, keep an eye out for future videos. You can um, like, comment and, um, and subscribe to be notified when new videos go live. Until next time, take care. Bye bye.